the concept of a podcast all about this actually pretty stale term, moderation? Mm-hmm. Ooh, exciting. I Tell know. me more. <laughs> I know. We're going to try and make it fun for you. We're going to try and oh, make God. it entertaining. Yeah. We are going to make it entertaining. Mm-hmm. There is no you try. You like it? <clears throat> Go to your room. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Erin Green. And I am Michael Gray. And welcome to Middle-ish. This is a podcast about all things in moderation. And this is episode one. Episode one. Here we go. (laughs) We're doing it. This is a thing. It's happening right now. I feel like every time I use a term that says episode, episode one or a number, it's like a Star Wars franchise <laughs> kind of thing and I'm, I'm like expecting us to wear it like can i get a stormtrooper mask <sighs> you can <laughs> i think we should do that <laughs> i think it's fun except can we not be episodes one through three of the star wars franchise oh my gosh oh amen to that can we start i this is have episode never watched four. them before <laughs> and I don't, I don't don't it's not worth it just like read the cliff notes <laughs> online or something it's not worth it Anyway, hey, we're doing a podcast. My, my husband and I, <laughs> I was just going to say, my husband and I watched episodes one through three because I had never seen them before. And, and he was like, we need to watch all the Star Wars in order and then go through like Rogue One and go through all these others mm-hmm. before we watch the final one. And we watched them all. And I was like, uh, who's this Jar Jar Binks guy? <laughs> and he's laughing, like pausing it and just like rolling. It's so funny because I would never... I wasn't in the whole Jar Jar Binks, yeah. you know, uh, era, I guess. When People had came really to strong feelings about Jar Jar Binks. They, they did. They really yeah. did. They he, still do, mm-hmm, Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ruined things for a lot of people. I personally <laughs> thought that adult Anakin Skywalker was the worst part about all that because that guy was a terrible actor, in my opinion. Wasn't he? But, yes. Yeah. And he, I thought, really? He went... He went on to make several movies, and I remember seeing, um, oh my gosh, what's his real name? Um, is it Christian something? Or yeah, something Christian? it is. Um, Hayden Christensen. Yeah. I had seen him in a, a movie called Life as a House mm-hmm. that is a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, it's, really? it's worth seeing. It's, a, it's heavy. It's got mm-hmm. some um, heavy moments in it, but he... I thought he did okay in that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't like the greatest actor. Didn't but then ruin I saw it. him it <laughs> didn't ruin it. Not quite like Star Wars, not quite like episodes one through three. Yeah. But um yeah. Anyway, yeah. so this is episode one. This here is episode go. one, and here we go. Yay! Yeah. We're doing this. <laughs> All right. So um how about we introduce ourselves and maybe <clears throat> tell people why on earth they should even pay attention to anything we're saying right. if they decide to. And not just about Star Wars, but like other <laughs> things we're going to say too. Yeah. This is we not a Star not Wars a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast about all things in moderation, and we're going to yes. get into that and how we came up with this idea together. But um, first, maybe let's, Michael, tell, tell everybody a little bit about you and kind of your background and why you do what you do. Okay. Um, so just... The personal side, real quick. Um, I uh, married two little girls. Um, Lila's nine. Sophie's three and a half, almost four, and they're the best things in the world. Uh, my wife Kathleen is currently staying home with um, Sophie, um, and yeah, it's just I don't know. I never thought I'd be. I always knew I'd like being a parent, but it's just like so much cooler than I thought it'd be. I just love it so much. It's like so much fun. Um, but yeah, live in uh, just outside of Houston, Texas. I've lived here for less than a year, coming up on a year. Um, but born and raised in Ontario, Oregon, just about an hour outside of Boise. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I am a personal trainer and nutritional coach. Um, I've been doing that for coming up on 12 years. Um, I currently do most of my work online. That's a recent thing since I moved down here to Texas. Before that, most of my work was in person um, in a gym up there in Ontario that I was at for close to 11 years. Um, But the last, you know, I don't know, almost year, I've been doing things almost exclusively online. 
so yeah and i don't know i just i love you know my i remember my parents talking about like when i was in high school like i think michael's gonna go into social work and i didn't even know what that meant but they <gasps> oh, just i can totally see that yeah they just were yeah. like you just like to help people and that kind of stuff and i was like what's social work um <laughs> which is funny because I wind up getting my bachelor's in social work. I did that for a few years and it just wasn't for me, but I feel like I still really get to do a lot of that similar kind of thing. Um, being a trainer and helping people, you know, work on their nutrition and stuff. You, you know, there's a lot of healing that goes into that kind of work. There's a lot of introspection and um, just helping people be happier and healthier and accepting themselves more. It's, it's really similar. And I feel like I use a lot of the things that I learned working um in that social work field for a few years that that have really helped me um do a lot better job at, at what i'm doing so that is so cool and it com it like kind of brings the pieces of the puzzle together for me understanding why you're so in tune with treating the whole person or with helping the whole mm -hmm. person versus just the physical aspect. Um, I didn't know that you went to school for social work and it yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It works out well. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Pass the ball to who you, am I? Aaron. Who are you and what are you doing here? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I am a registered dietitian and a recovering professional triathlete. I raced uh, professionally for seven years and was, mm -hmm. um, uh, I was competitive before that and, and always active. And I'm a native Idahoan. I grew mm -hmm. up uh, in a very tiny little farm town. And when I say tiny people, I mean tiny. Yeah. Population 500 ish. Ooh. I'm rounding up. It's actually like, I think the last time, <laughs> I think the last time I was home, the, the sign said uh, 456 or something like that. So it's, it's a tiny little town. Wow. I had, I uh, yeah, I had uh, 15 people in my graduating high school class, and seven wow. of us started kindergarten together. <laughs> Wild, right? <laughs> I know it's, that it's wild. wild. Like I'm one of those people that people meet and they're like, I didn't know that you actually like <laughs> existed wow. in, in the world, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't think so, I yeah. that. Yeah. Um, went to university of Idaho and I got my bachelor's in sports science. And as I was studying sports science and exercise physiology and getting really into the, the human body and biochemistry mm -hmm. and, took a sports nutrition class and I was like, whoa, this is, this is it. Like where, you know, physiology, exercise physiology and sports nutrition meet. That's mm -hmm. where I want to be um, because awesome. there's so much overlap, but it seemed like there was just this huge knowledge gap between people who specialized only in exercise mm -hmm. versus people who specialize only in nutrition. Sure. And I, I wanted to get that, that overlap. So um, finished my bachelor's in uh, sports science, went on to get my master's in dietetics and have worked with a variety of populations. Uh, I just left the WIC program that I worked for 11 years. So even though I do not have children, um, I worked with families with little kids yeah. uh, for years and learned so much and yeah. realized like there's, there, there's no guidebook on this. Is there, Michael? Nope. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> yeah, and and no matter. It is how literally you... winging it. <laughs> you're raising human beings, and you're winging it. And it's hilarious because the the same things that I read in you know my professional side of you know mm -hmm. helping families and helping feed children and all that stuff is like the same things that I hear from my dietitian peers who are also raising kids. Where mm -hmm. it's like it's snack time from like 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. It's snack mm -hmm. time all dang day. And <laughs> so, yep. um, so yeah, that's my, that's my background. I currently am, um, uh, month three into being a full-time entrepreneur. I started my own consulting practice back in 2015 and have kind of done it on the side and finally took the leap, uh, to doing this full-time. So yeah. here I am. Yeah. yeah. I'm really and excited about are. you're doing that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Cool. It, it has uh, grown 
pretty authentically and has gotten traction in a way that I didn't anticipate just from, you know, being uh, Mm -hmm. known in the community, not just in Boise, but like the sports community and triathlon. And um, one of, one of the cornerstones of my philosophy, and we can get into this a little bit too, is on uh, body image and food relationship. So like you, I have uh, gravitated toward this area of really helping the individual in the context of their life, not just prescribing like this step-by-step, this is how you do it kind of thing. Right. Uh, So I think that's pretty unique in the sports nutrition realm and it's something that's hugely needed. Mm -hmm. I can see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's just such a great point. It's like, you know, and this is, I don't want to get off topic, but, and I think this is something we'll address a lot in this podcast, but it's like, I think the reason people so often don't get to where they want to be is because they're not addressing all of the things, you know, they're just like, okay, I just need to eat better. And it's like, well, why don't you, Right. you know, what is keeping you from doing that? What stopped you in the past? And just that kind of the whole, you know, 360 degree perspective is, is where a lot of people, yeah miss the mark. Yeah, it, and it, I think it's just fantastic. You're doing that, especially in the sports world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and it is, uh, it's a lot of exploration and it's a lot of being open to mm-hmm. some of the blind spots that we don't all see in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, the population I tend to work with is I do get a lot of triathletes mm-hmm. and we're type A and we, yeah, you know, we sure. like the numbers, we like things to be cut and dried and fit into this nice little formula. And unfortunately, human beings are not robots right? <laughs> as much as we sometimes would like it to fit that <laughs> way. Uh, things don't always like happen in a calculation. And so, I mean, there, there is a formula, but it really depends on the individual and that formula is always evolving and it always mm-hmm. takes some reassessment and some you know, checking in with yourself and, and being honest with yourself about how things are going. And like you said, what things are keeping me from reaching mm-hmm. that, yeah. that point? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we met at, at your wedding. wedding. Yeah. Yeah. So Aaron's husband, Matt, um, is a photographer and fantastic. He took uh, my wife and I's um, engagement photos and we were just like, holy crap, I didn't know these could be this good. (laughs) And um, we were just so impressed. And then on top of that, we just had so much fun with him. You know, I remember after getting our engagement photos, we were kind of like, I kind of want to be friends with that guy. Like, he's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) I really like him. And Catherine was like, yeah, he's really cool. Everybody, everybody loves MFMG. He's just (laughs) awesome. You know, and so we were like, all right, well, the natural obvious choice is he's going to do our wedding photos. And um, so talking to that, he was like, hey, can I bring my girlfriend at the time just to kind of help me? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. That's me. That was me. That's her. Yep. Yeah, it was you. (laughs) It wasn't someone else. (laughs) The girlfriend at the time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. That's okay. (laughs) He brought you and you weren't married yet. What was her name? No. Uh, I know that one girl. talking about her. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Um. Yeah. And so you guys came up and we got married up in the mountains and you guys stayed, I think a couple of nights up there um, or one night, I don't remember. But anyway, yeah. we had the rehearsal. You guys were there for the rehearsal. And mm-hmm. after the rehearsal, it turned into just kind of this awesome organic party that was like so much fun. And I remember just, I was just barely starting to personal train, like maybe a year into it, maybe less, maybe a touch more. And I think you were Maybe just I, w- I was just starting, and in fact, when you were giving your background and you said about twelve years, that's my mark too. Yeah. So as a dietitian, so I think we were both like coming into the realm of yeah. health and fitness together, but with this very similar philosophy. Yeah, yeah, it'll be twelve years in October for me. Yeah, yeah, so real close. But I remember at that at that rehearsal at after party, I guess you call it. <laughs> we're just lots of drinking and dancing and a whole lot of fun. <laughs> I, just I know, remember, I don't remember much of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in the living room of that cabin and just talking to you about nutrition and exercise for a long, long time. I mean, I think we talked for close to an hour. Yeah. Um, it was just a long time. And I was just, I didn't really know anybody else in that world at all, you know, and I was just like, wow, she's awesome too. You know, um, it's very easy to, to just talk with you about this stuff. We had, I think, similar thoughts and philosophies then. 
and as we were really green. And then just knowing you over the last 12 years and, uh, you know, just seeing stuff on social media, conversations we've had, I feel like our philosophies have just kind of grown parallel, you know, um, and how we do things and that kind of stuff, which has been super fun. Yeah. And, and likewise, I remember the conversation that we had, um, at your wedding as well. And I had originally wanted to go into personal training. Mm -hmm. So when I got my degree in sports science, that was my direction was either strength and conditioning or personal Mm -hmm. training. And I became jaded on it, uh, because of the, the lack of overlapping, I guess, comprehension between Mm -hmm. the two fields, right? Nutrition and fitness. And so I really struggled with that. And I had developed a little bit, I think, a little bit of a stigma around personal trainers. And when we were discussing, yes, I I, unfortunately think it is. Um, but when, as we were talking, I was like, whoa, this, this guy's different. Like you, you had this rich understanding of human behavior, decision-making, you know, habits, um, barriers and, and just nutrition. Like instead of the, the one size fits all approach or like this very kind of boxed in idea of what nutrition is, you were very much like about the individual and about discussing, um, you know, possibilities instead of just prescribing, like, this is how you do it. And I found that so refreshing, um, from a personal trainer. So congratulations. You (laughs) you kind of changed, (laughs) yeah, you kind of changed my, um, my impression in that, in that moment. And of course I have, I have, uh, vastly opened up my, um, you know, my, uh, view, I guess, Mm -hmm. of the personal training world since then, because I do have a lot of colleagues and friends that are still in that realm. Um, but yeah, and then we, I, I felt like we developed this really uh, great social media, mm-hmm. um, you know, relationship where we could like kind of bounce jokes and mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> banter and ideas off of each other mm-hmm. and kind of, I mean, I mean, let's be honest, we were poking fun at a lot of the like mm-hmm. fad diets <laughs> and nutrition evangelism and, you know, and then also, um, I really appreciated when you would share stories of a conversation you had with a client or, um, you know, different things that you would observe in your work that spoke to the broader issue of behavior change, of goal setting. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I agree with so much of what you were observing and then how you would work with people on those aspects. Mm -hmm. Um, and we even shared a couple clients mm-hmm. too. So yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had so much trust and respect for you and what you do that I had a couple clients that I'd worked with for um, the wife, gosh, I don't know, like almost 12 years, I think. Um, and wow. then her husband, six or seven, a long time, you know, and they were just, they were just needing, um, I think some things beyond my scope. Um, yep. And I was like, well, I know the person to talk to. And of course they were just, I mean, they couldn't have spoken more highly of you. In fact, when I, so they're really good friends of ours, like really good friends. They're like an aunt and uncle to my girls. Um, When I told them that we were going to be doing this, like they were so excited that the two of us were going to be doing something together. They're like, oh my gosh, yes, that's awesome. So (laughs) yeah, but anyway. It is about time. It is about time. It is. I think we've been talking about doing something for maybe close to a couple years. I feel like been that long? you, yes, I feel like you have been, I've been like the one kind of holding up the train here because oh, totally. I had, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <Just> I kidding. had, <laughs> I know you've, you've been on it and, and trying to encourage no, this, no. but I've, I've had triathlon and, and my other work and different things kind of distracting me. And when you reached out just recently, I mean, this has mm-hmm. come about in the last, what, two months? Tops. Yeah. yeah, maybe even let. Well, maybe when we first it was, talked, it was two months ago. It was right after like the the COVID shitstorm hit, mm-hmm. and everybody was locked down. Yeah, locked down. Mm-hmm. And uh, as luck would have it, um, I don't know that I looked at it as luck at the time, but mm-hmm. I was starting my uh, consulting practice in earnest when everything happened with right. with COVID. And when you reached out and you're like, you know, I don't know what you're doing these days, but I think this is actually a really good opportunity for us to collaborate. And I still think about this and it was perfect timing actually. So it was really awesome. fun yeah. 
you know, to reconnect. And, um, and then this idea of a podcast came about and I think we both were like, we don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but let's but do we it can anyway. Talk about stuff. That's all it is, right? It's just talk about yeah. stuff. <laughs> Little did we exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. know. So I just, for anyone listening, I just want, I just want to say like, we are genuinely so excited about this project. Like we're just really, we're really excited to be doing this, you know? And I think it's just, um, it's really coming from a place of like, um, one, like let's have fun. Like we enjoy each other. We enjoy talking about this stuff. So let's just enjoy doing this, you know? Um, we'll but make also, fun of Michael. We'll make fun of Michael on the way. Yep. Yeah, probably a lot. Um, I'll be the butt <laughs> of most jokes. I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a pretty easy target too. <laughs> Cry athlete, also, crazy cat lady. Are Go you ahead. a crazy cat lady? Oh, yes. I did not know that. I knew you had, I only really know one cat, rally cat, right? I do have one cat, but he like runs the joint. Oh, okay. And yeah. So I you mean, haven't got into like 11 or 12 cats yet. No, yeah. but I'm, I could be in the market quite easily. Yeah. I think you should just settle into it. Just lean we've, into we've, it. Well, here's a little indication. We've talked about it several times. My husband and I have talked about, you know, Rally needs a sibling. We need a kitten. We need another cat. But because Rally is quite territorial and he he can be a little bit of a turd, um, and we value our furniture, we're probably not going to do that. He runs the show around here. Yeah. So I'll let you finish your thought in a second. But last night. So we bring him in at night. We don't mm-hmm. like him sure. to be out, you know, fighting with other neighborhood cats sure. and stuff. We do have a cat flap, but if he doesn't want to come in, he'll stay out all night if we don't bring him in. Mm-hmm. So last night, the little Aaron and Matt circus dance that we did to get the cat inside was shaking the treat bag <laughs> and throwing – Matt's literally taking greenies and throwing them out onto the steps. <laughs> in our carport to try and get the damn cat to take the bait and get a little closer. And he, he was being such a shit about it. And I just was like, I wanted to just get out my phone and record the whole thing because mm-hmm. we, were, we were pretty pathetic. So yeah, a crazy cat lady in the sense that like he runs the show. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Now, are you guys, are you guys dog people at all? I mean, not in far as owning it, but you guys like dogs? Are you like, mm I do love dogs. And yeah. in fact, I thought I was a dog person until we got a cat. And yeah. and I, I don't know that I, I mean, I say I'm a cat person because that's what sure. my world is right now, but I have friends that have dogs and I love them. And mm-hmm. I grew up with a dog. Um, I would consider getting a dog for sure someday. So I don't know that I'm either one, but I, I think I appreciate, um, the personalities that cats have and just the different they behaviors. Yep. Oh man. I didn't realize that it's such a, I can see how people yeah, are funny. like total cat people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never, cons- and we had an awesome cat growing up and then that was kind of it. And then uh, Lila, my oldest daughter got one for her birthday two years ago and it's the raddest cat. It's so cool. First of all, it's named buttercup cupcake. So it doesn't oh, that sound cats like a with two names. Yes. seven year old named it, seven year old girl, <laughs> but it's a rad cat. It's almost kind of like a dog. Like it's just, it's so chill and yeah, it's just an awesome cat. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. Yep. I really like this cat a whole lot, even I though I would and call myself change. a dog person, but yeah, yeah, that can totally change your perspective. If you meet uh, an animal that you're like, okay, I could mm-hmm. get on board with this personality. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, just to, that was a little sidetrack, but little, it was one right. of my was one of my questions for you if you oh. have any pets now yes just that one uh we also we are in heavy negotiations for a dog <gasps> um so we had to put down my dog it was my dog uh two years ago and it was hard that was like my oh. dog you know i feel like people get like those once in a lifetime pets that are just yeah. like more than pets you know it's like this dog's like a human you know and so that was tough and i just haven't been ready for a long time but I kind of got my head around the fact like, okay, if we get a dog, this isn't my dog. I'm not replacing mine. This is a family dog, right? Yeah. And I really want my girls to have a puppy in their childhood story. So we are, I'm on like shelter websites almost every day, every other day, just looking, looking, looking. 
Um, so we will probably have a dog within the next few months if we can. Oh, find fun. Someone. So, which will be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'll be looking um, for that update for sure. Yeah. Puppy time. Yay. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that was a little tangent, but to finish your thought, Michael, about just explaining, um, what we're going to do here. We are going to have fun and I'm sorry, we're probably going to get on tangents because, um, you know, that's what, that's what life happens. dishes up. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what happens. Uh, but the concept of a podcast all about this actually pretty stale term, moderation. Mm-hmm. Ooh, exciting. Tell I know. me more. <laughs> I know. We're going to try and make it fun for you. We're going to try and oh, make it entertaining. Yeah. We are going to make it entertaining. Mm-hmm. There is no you try. You like it. <clears throat> Go to your room. Yeah. <laughs> so I think moderation and that that middle is where the magic really happens for mm-hmm. people when we're talking about health, fitness, goal setting. Um, it's so common for people just to want to go to like that end game or the outcome. Like I just want to be here and to not actually see that taking purposeful steps in that direction actually counts and that maybe that extreme view that you have is not necessarily where you want to be truly, you know, if we take everything else in your life into context. Uh, So, and there's just so many examples of this and we're going to, you know, take some deep dives into behavior change and, and habits and, and examples and, um, you know, stories from, from our own lives uh, into this. So, Yeah. 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 Well, I just think, you know, people, I think people tend to live in extremes when it comes to their health. You know, we've talked about this before, you know, you and I, but it seems like either people are just kind of like not really doing anything to be a healthier person or they're doing everything, you know, and it's like all or none, you know, um, slam on the brakes or pedal to the floor. And it's like, I think we've both just learned that there's, um, there's most often, I won't say always, I want to say always, but I'll say most often, uh, very little long-term benefit there. Um, it's just, it doesn't work out, you know, and if people can, can pump the brakes a bit and slow things down and be more, put more energy and attention to a few things and do those few things really well versus doing um, a lot of things kind of half-assed, you know, like, man, you're going to get so much further and you're not going to get burnt out and you're not going to hate your life while you're doing this. And you're not going to be like have social situations interrupted because, oh, I can't eat carbs ever for the rest of my life. Sorry, son. I can't have a piece of your birthday cake totally. because I can't totally. eat sugar. You know? Um, yeah. It's man. There's just so much. That's where sustainability and long-term uh, success lies, you know, and that's what we want for people. You know, it's like, even if someone works with me for three months and I never work with them again, I want them to be successful for the rest of their lives, right? I don't want to do this crash course thing where they lose 30 pounds in three months and then six months later they gain 30, 35, 40 right. pounds back. And you, can, right? and you can share that as a success story. Like, oh yeah, then my client just lost all this weight, but right. then you don't know what right. happened to them six months yeah. down the road. They're miserable now, but this yeah. looks good. You know, right. um, right. I'd, I'd rather have people lose no weight in three months and develop some habits that are going to set them up for just being long-term successful, you know? So I think that, I think we're just really passionate about this at first glance, kind of boring idea. <laughs> Moderation. Let's be moderate, you know? I know. But, but I think, I think we kind of want to reclaim it. We want to reclaim this idea of moderation, that it's not a stale term. It's, um, it's, it's, it's the place where you really thrive, you know? Yeah. And maybe give people some ideas of how they can find that. Because Mm -hmm. I think one of the most common things I encounter with my clients is they come to me with these questions on, you know, diet practices they've heard about, or, you know, the latest trend Mm -hmm. in fitness or all of these things. And because I come from a background of elite competition, Mm -hmm. uh, I think people are surprised when I give them permission to find that balance and to Mm -hmm. give a trade-off. And um, I I have had countless clients and even friends that I have conversations with about this say, this was different than I expected. Like you're saying things that I wouldn't have expected you to say. And 
I mean, for me, that's flattering. It's nice to know that, that I'm able to be that, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, that piece of, of a balance and, and maybe word of reason for people. But it's also, sometimes it's a little disheartening for me because the impression that people have of what a dietitian does, what a Mm -hmm. professional athlete does, what a, you know, personal trainer does, Mm -hmm. um, and what they expect from us can be so different. Sometimes it's a, I think it's a little bit of a letdown for some people, to be honest, Mm -hmm. because they come wanting that formula. They want that magic bullet or you know, they want me to just tell them what to do. Right. And that's not my job. Yeah. I don't view that as my job. I, I definitely want to educate and inform and share my knowledge and go seeking answers when I don't have the answers for people. At the same time, I think it's really important to teach people. I tell clients all the time, my goal is that you don't need me Right. however far down the road that you can go forth in this crazy world of fads and extremes and rethink things with confidence and and you know be your own guide mm-hmm. um so so that's you know where where I come from with clients and and something that I present from from the get go and that approach isn't for everybody and I'll be completely honest you know right. some people really really want just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I want to take the thinking out of it. I don't want to put effort into it. And I'm just probably not the right choice for you if, <laughs> if that's what you're after. Right. This, yeah. So, and maybe this podcast will open people's eyes to understanding that you can have a kind of a, a happy medium or a moderate approach to things without giving up you know, some people hear moderation and they think, well, that, that you're giving up goals, you're giving up your health, you're throwing in the towel, you're not going to be as focused. That is not at all what this is about. If anything, I think it's the completely, it's completely wrong. I think you're more focused. I think you're not throwing in the towel. I think you're reclaiming longevity and I think you're reclaiming success. You know, I mean, I think people tend to, I think they just, they think so short term with health and wellness, you know, they think like this summer or this wedding and, and that's it. And, you know, I just, I tell my clients a lot, like you're going to do this for the rest of your life. Like that's a long time, you know, you're going to (laughs) be doing this for 40, 50, 60 years. So why don't we set things up in a way that you can do it for 40 or 50 or 60 years? You know, yeah. um, sure, you can do a crash course and things will look great. But like, but I like this this phrase: you dance with the one that brought you. And just in that, you know, if someone gets to a goal with certain behaviors, you're probably going to have to keep those behaviors up to stay there. And if those goals make your life miserable, you think it's going to last? It's right. Not. It just isn't. And and to your point, you know, something else that this kind of moderate approach teaches people is to be flexible. Mm-hmm. And to adapt. And as you're saying, if you're going to keep this up in 40 years or, you know, when you're, when you're 60, 70 years old, your body and your life is going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. So if you have no capability of being flexible and kind of rolling with it and adapting and noticing the Mm trade-off of certain behaviors and, and, um, you know, outcome focused approaches, then I, I don't know where you're going to be in 40 years or how right. you're going to approach that. And, and do you really want to at every single phase of your life when something stops working, that's a very rigid and extreme mm-hmm. kind of approach. Do you really want to seek out the next rigid and extreme approach right. to get you into the next phase of your life or to, right. you know, to satisfy that short term kind of. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a great point because I mean, I understand why some people want to have like, you know, like very rigid meal plans and just, I don't want to learn anything. Just tell me what to do, right? Just tell me what to do. And, and I think just to expand on the point you're making a little bit is like, like you said, life's going to change. So these strict rules may work for where you're at right now with the number of kids you have, you have and the relationship you're in and your job and your commute to work and all these things. But when one of those things changes, you're going to have to change the rules. Mm-hmm. And that stuff's going to change multiple times in a year. So over the course of the rest of your life, like how many times are you going to have to adapt? So like you said, if we can be flexible and, 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 and figure out how to like, how can I pivot? How can I maneuver a little bit? You know, how can I, how can I change things a bit and continue 
if I know how to do that, you know, then we're again, looking at that kind of longer term success and, um, and just enjoying it. You know, that's, oh, I, mean, man. I think that's a big thing for me. It's just like how many people are trying to be healthier and just hate what they're doing. It's awful. Yeah. You know, it's like, is yeah. that really how you want to live? Yeah. They think that like health is purgatory. Like I have to be, <laughs> right? I have to be mean to myself and I have to mm -hmm. like chastise myself for doing things wrong and, mm -hmm. you know, in Punish order to be healthy. And, yeah. 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 And, Ugh. and we'll, so, we'll get into that too. Some, mm -hmm. some self kindness and body kindness and different things, different aspects along that line, showing yourself mm -hmm. grace. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So moderation could be fun, you guys. So thanks for coming along. So fun, you guys. <laughs> it really is. It's fun, and it's also, I think, necessary. You know, yeah. it's critical to just step out of out of extremes and into something that's actually sane. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what was that T-shirt uh, idea we had a couple of years ago? Like, <laughs> sane isn't sexy, or something like that. Or <laughs> do you remember that? It was like a couple. We talked about something like that. Was it on Facebook? Yeah, I think so. You know, I've thought about because so much of our professional correspondence has been on Facebook, mm -hmm. we should probably just go back and maybe search each we other's pages and yeah. find, because I'm remembering a particular post where we, we poked fun at like, um, you know, needing to have this like grass fed organic milk from the um from the alps or something mm -hmm. or like i mean just like poking fun at like some of these really extreme like i call it like nutrition evangelism like buying milk right. in the grocery store isn't good enough you need to have your own cow in the backyard and you know it's blessed like by a priest who's a virgin <laughs> and yeah and it's just it's it's kind of yeah, I I just remember having some of these conversations with you where we're like, who can even wrap their head around some of the recommendations people are hearing? And right. I mean, they're usually not hearing it from, you know, a, a credible source. It's usually mm -hmm. something they read on the internet, which we know is like a wealth of reliable mm -hmm. information. <clears throat> Yeah. So, yeah, we could do that. We could go back through our, our Facebook um, conversations and see. But I'm, I'm curious about this T-shirt you're mentioning. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was something about like, like saying isn't sexy or sustainability isn't sexy. Because we were talking about how like <laughs> that concept of moderation isn't grabby, you know, but yeah. 20 pounds in a month. Like, oh, my God, that's awesome. I, I want to do I that. Know. Versus like, hey, let's eat some more vegetables and drink some more water and improve on your sleep. People are like, who's this idiot? You know what I mean? But the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is I like to, not in a mean way, but like I like to, to pitch that to clients sometimes of like, okay, so if you think this is too easy, then do it 100% of the time for a week or two. Yes. So it, and show me it's too easy. If it's too easy, awesome. Then we'll make it. But you know what happens? Like, oh. Yeah. Okay. This is harder than yep. I thought. I totally so if you can't do a couple things a hundred percent of the time for a week. Why can you do 10? You know, I totally get <laughs> like, it. And yeah. this is, this is very similar in the sports nutrition world. Um, I get a lot of questions on, you know, should I be working out fasted? Should I be mm -hmm. practicing nutrition periodization? Should I be uh, restricting carbs and, you know, training glycogen low and all of this mm -hmm. other stuff. And um, there's a, a very prominent triathlete a coach named Matt Dixon who has a saying called nail the basics. Mm -hmm. So he talks about nailing the basics and that would be like getting adequate sleep, taking enough recovery, eating the right foods consistently, like in a very simplistic fashion, um, you know, sticking to your fitness plan, all of these other things, practicing mental wellness. And if people are not nailing the basics or like you're saying, doing these very easy things like low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. but yet they want to go into these very nuanced and, you know, maybe not even scientifically valid kinds mm -hmm. of practices that are fairly extreme and rigid and take a lot of focus and, and, uh, um, discipline to right. instill it's, yeah, it's, um, it's challenging to get people to refocus into that more right. moderate realm. Right. I so think maybe what we're trying to say is you're not that special. <laughs> And we mean that in a loving, we're all special. amazing way. <laughs> and just that it's not that complicated, you know? 
it's now it doesn't mean it's, it's necessarily easy to do but yeah they just man if you can do the basics well things are going to look awesome and you're going to yeah. feel really really good and that yeah. might be all you ever need yeah probably. yeah yeah so um i have some questions for you i have some questions for you but you can and go first my first one kind of is a nice okay. segue from what we were just talking about have you ever gone on a crazy or extreme diet? And if so, what was it? How did it yes. go? Yes. So this was 2001, 2002, somewhere right in there. I was just out of college and low fat was still kind of hanging around at that point. Um, and so was when low carb was really getting big with like Atkins, at least yeah. that was the first time I was like, wow, this is really gaining some steam. So I thought, well, obviously I need to do low fat and low carb, <clears throat> not really understanding what that means. So <laughs> it means, what did you eat, dude? <laughs> I almost exclusively <laughs> lots of veggies, lots of veggies no, and chicken breast, almost no, no? veggies. Yeah. What? Um, I, I drank a lot of those like uh, tomato soups that come in like the little pre packed oh, awesome. thing that you can microwave. I <laughs> ate a lot of pepperoni and cheese because Atkins, right? So that's Oh, that part. sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of fat free hot dogs. <laughs> oh, Lord. They make those? Mm -hmm. Wait, or that's maybe a thing. low fat. Maybe low fat. They're at least low fat. Yeah. What's in them? It's just good stuff, you know, it's <laughs> like spinach and mystery meat uh, spinach hot dogs <laughs> yeah but that's that's honestly the most of what i ate because i thought okay well these hot dogs are good because they're low fat i like hot dogs so i can eat low fat ones and then i'm avoiding carbs with you know cheese and pepperoni and that's and it worked for me for a while <laughs> till one i got really tired of that and two um yeah it just wasn't sustainable because yeah how long not, did you stay on that probably two to three months a while. I mean, not a long, long time, but that's a long time yeah. for, I mean, I a ate long time to be too. eating fat free hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. But I bet the bulk of my, I bet 60, 65% of my diet was those four things. Wow. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Okay. My question to you, <laughs> are you ready for this? We're going to get deep. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dive in. <laughs> Twizzlers or red vines? <gasps> Twizzlers, but they got to be strawberry. That's why I'm yeah. not a fan of cherry licorice. Okay. And I know people that will go hog wild on that stuff. Like you big, you bring the big tubs of red vines and people are like, mm -hmm. oh, it's kryptonite. I could really just ignore those things. And I'm not a big fan, a but like- person. I'm not, but like yeah. strawberry flavored, um, like the strawberry Twizzlers or even like the mm -hmm. Twizzler Sours or something. I yeah, those. those those could get me. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't realize red vines were cherry flavored. I assumed they were strawberry. I think, well, whatever. They're licorice flavor. They're like the red licorice flavor. Whatever that like, is. I think whatever it's cherry. They are, they're garbage. They're not Twizzlers. So <laughs> it reminds me of cough syrup a little bit. I just can't get behind Does it. it. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Well, I can understand why you might not like them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, my turn. Your turn. Ocean beach or mountain lake? Oh, man. Can I do a mountain lake that's close to the ocean beach? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Where does that exist? I don't know. Um, Probably if somewhere I had in to... Switzerland. Or... <laughs> that's not ocean, I guess. Yeah. It's mountains. Italy, um, maybe? I really enjoy Southern both. Italy, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoy both a lot. Um, but if I had to pick one, I would probably, I would probably pick the mountains. Um, mm -hmm. And then, as long as I don't have to be there in the winter, because I'm not a snow fan, um, no. which is one of my favorite things about being in Texas. Winter was, was awesome. Say. It's like, oh, it's Christmas and it's 65 and sunny. This is fantastic. <laughs> I don't have to scrape my car in the morning and spend 20 minutes, you know, warming it up. Um, but yeah, I do love the beach. And that's one of my favorite things about where we are. Like we can be on the beach in like 30, 35 minutes. Um, but I love the mountains. I really love the mountains. Grew up going nice. to the mountains a lot, you know. So and I you got married there mm -hmm. in the Wallawas. Beautiful yeah. place. 
beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we showing off that photo album that Matt made for us. Yeah. For, it's one of our favorite things. Like, yeah. It's just, it was gorgeous. just gorgeous up there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what TV show can you watch over and over and over? <gasps> TV show. Or movie. Oh man. Uh, if it's a TV show, I think, I mean, something like Friends, yeah. I think just... I, I love the characters and there's so many episodes that I remember from that. And of course that was, you know, kind of in my young adult years when, when I was heavy into that, I remember watching it with, with friends of my own. Uh, so I think friends was always, How appropriate. <laughs> I do have friends. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably one, uh, a movie I could watch over and over. Gosh, I, I used to be just addicted to movies. Um, any of them from my, I guess my childhood and high school days, um, you know, Shawshank Redemption, Independence Day, some of mm. those that, you know, I remember from, from high school. I love like a good stupid comedy that I can just tune out and watch, you know, Dumb and Dumber or mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Boy or Bridesmaids mm. or something like that. <laughs> so I can, I can watch, yeah, I can watch things over and over. Surprisingly, I don't really do that anymore. I, yeah. If I've seen it once, I'm kind of, even if it's such a great movie, like I've been wanting to watch Free Solo again. Have you seen that one? I haven't. I still haven't. <gasps> I know I need to. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it wild. It looks real insane. It's So we watched it in the theater and I was like gripped the whole time. And I'm like, you know, hugging Matt's arm and squeezing his <laughs> hand. Like, I can't watch. I can't watch. Even though I know that if they're not going to make a movie about this, right? if something super tragic happens, mm -hmm. I still like they do such a good job of putting you in that space and like really feeling what Alex Honnold, the, the climber is that's mm -hmm. free soloing. Anyway such a fantastic movie but that's an example of one that i probably could watch over yeah. and over maybe with a glass of wine to keep me like calm down sure <laughs> <laughs> uh so let's see what's your favorite form of movement or exercise um i i really enjoy strength training um i yeah, that's probably number one. I dislike cardio a whole lot, a whole <laughs> lot. I really don't enjoy it. Um, yeah, but I really enjoy strength training. I love going to the gym or just here in you know my little studio that I'm in, um, and just you know hitting the weights. I really like that a lot. I also really like um, doing just some some good dedicated mobility work. You know, um, I do that sometimes just kind of on the living room floor while I'm watching something in the evenings after the girls are in bed and just spend 10 or 15 minutes um, doing that just because I feel so much better. Um, and as I'm getting older, it's just like more and more critical, you know, but um, strength training would be number one for me. I really enjoy that. And then just mobility work. There's a close second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So my third and final question for you mm -hmm. is if you weren't a dietitian, what would you be doing? Oh, I had this one for you too. So, um, sorry, I stole it for our, for our listeners. I had like seven questions prepared and right before we <laughs> recorded, <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out, buddy. That's okay. Michael's like, Oh, I, I did. <laughs> I didn't write down anything. I'm not really sure what my questions are. Let me come up with something. <laughs> so I scribbled down two and I was like, I'll figure the third one out later. <laughs> so yeah, that was one of mine. Um, if I was not a dietitian, Oh man. I feel like it would have to be something that allowed me to be outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know, maybe something in, in uh, nature or um, I hesitate to say something like working for the park service because I'm not sure that would quite be the right um, avenue for me, but something that would allow me to be outside um, pretty regularly. I mean, I, I was a professional triathlete and spent a lot mm -hmm. of my days outside training for that. Um, maybe I would do something like, maybe I would get more into, you know, coaching and, and doing something, um, especially with like youth. I really love kind of instilling that, um, you can, 
you can move anywhere. You can be and, you know, get outside and you're going to be moving, whether it's hiking, right. you could ride a bicycle, you could, um, you know, go swim if you have a body of water nearby. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's, that doesn't really answer your question, but um, That's all right. maybe gives you a, an idea. Yeah. Something outside. Of what I like. Something outside. Anything yeah. outside. Anything outside. Yeah. Awesome. So our final uh, little bit to talk about here is a segment that we're going to be doing every week called mm-hmm. Meaning in the Mundane. So um, this was just kind of something we're trying to think of, uh, you know, something in our immediate worlds that kind of bring us uh, focus and mm-hmm. meaning and uh, maybe a, a slight message on mm-hmm. what we what we can be uh, re-centered on. So, yeah. Michael, do you have um, something yeah. mundane to talk about? I do. <laughs> something very boring. <laughs> Moderation. Now, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think, too, just, you know, we talked about maybe doing a, something at the end, and as we were kind of planning this, you know, like, what is that going to be? What do we want to have, like, it's kind of consistent from week to week? And I think we just kind of settled on, like, just finding joy and gratitude in everyday things in that um, there's, there doesn't have to be a significant event, you know, but like there's just, and there's awesome things that happen all around us every day. And just one for us to kind of be tuning in to those and just trying to be aware of that kind of stuff. But it's also, you know, to anyone who's listening to hopefully, you know, throughout your week, you know, just to tune into like, what, do, like, what is, especially right now, because there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of heaviness and yeah. I think finding just just beauty in small things um, is just really important, you know. So, anyway, mine this week, and I was telling Aaron before we started recording this, and probably probably a lot of mine each week are going to be about being a dad, you know, about my kids, um, just because I I think there is so much joy for me in that. But just two nights ago, so Sophie is three and a half, and she's just kind of getting old enough to like be okay, I'm kind of scared at night, right? Like, I don't uh, really know what, I don't really know about monsters, but I'm kind of, you know, nervous here. Yeah. And so a couple nights ago, I would put her in bed and I don't know, four or five minutes later, you know, daddy, daddy, she's calling from upstairs. And I go up and she's like, I'm scared, I'm scared. And, and just that all it took for her to feel safe is just me kneeling down by her bed you know, and I just kind of rubbed her back for him. And I was like, it's okay. You know, daddy's here and, and, and she's good. And I, and I sat there for 15, 20 seconds and I left and she was still awake, you know? So like she was still by herself in her room, but she's just like, okay, I'm good now. Daddy's here. He told me everything's fine. And just that I get to do that, you know, like I know all it takes for her to feel safe with whatever she's imagining is just like, Oh, okay. Daddy's here. And he told me I'm safe. So I'm good. How cool. That's like heroic for her. Yeah, it's awesome. And it really just, it it gives you some perspective. I think we we forget some of the things when we were kids, how we saw our parents, but it reminds me of like, oh yeah, I remember feeling that way about my parents. And the fact that she just sees me as like, oh, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. That's cool. (laughs) And that's an everyday thing. Not an everyday thing, but it's a lot of nights that, you know, I have to go in there and just sit for 15, 20 seconds and she's good. Yeah. Yeah. So how about Very you? Very cool. Uh, well, this is my second year gardening as an adult. Mm-hmm. And I am actually pretty surprised by how much joy I get from, <laughs> from going and checking on my plants. Awesome. <laughs> and um, it really is like such a, a uh, simple little activity. And I mean, half the time I go out there and just walk around the garden boxes and don't really do anything. Mm-hmm. I just look and kind of check on things. And um, it's it gives me something to kind of look forward to every day. And um, during this time of COVID and like you were saying, kind of refocus on your immediate world and what's mm-hmm. you know bringing you joy in your immediate surroundings. And one of my friends, I think put it perfectly where gardening equals hope. Gardening equals, you know, this hope that you're kind of anticipating something's Mm going to change every day. It may be so small, but then if you compare week to week or you compare month to month, all of a sudden there's, you know, 
the experience of watching the garden grow um, kind of rejuvenates that hope and that anticipation that things are going to change, yeah. you know, no matter how small and how gradual. So um, that pretty profound uh, message as simple as like going out and looking at my plants and making sure they're doing okay. So I like that a lot. I've never thought about it that way, but yeah, I, totally I hadn't see that. either. Yeah. I hadn't either, but yeah. Well, and just, yeah, just the belief that from something very small, something significant is going to grow, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. I think we should wrap episode up one. episode one. Down, yeah. down. So, right. next week, we'll be, um, we'll be talking about just like habits and how to, to build and um, develop sustainable, sane, unsexy habits, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. The yeah. super boring stuff, but we're going to make it interesting. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll come up with some, yep. some fun stories and yeah. some jokes, I'm sure. For sure. And yeah. And, and just, you know, every week will be centered around moderation, but how that looks is going to be vastly different. I think, you know, our topics will be different. Um, you know, our tangents will probably certainly be different. Um, but that's just kind of the hub is how do we do this long term and how do we live a healthy lifestyle for ever? Yeah. And as our listener base grows beyond just our spouses, mm-hmm. we'll mm-hmm. we'll want moms. people <laughs> and our mom. I don't think my mom knows what a podcast is. Come on. <laughs> She'd be like, What? What's Apple iTunes? <laughs> What's I don't know. What are what are headphones? I don't know. <laughs> Can I play it on a CD? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I love my mom, by the way, you guys, but you know, she lives in a town of less than 500 people. Like there's just right. not a lot, a lot of, <laughs> yeah, that technology. Uh, so as we do get more listeners, we want to hear from you guys. Mm-hmm. What questions do you have from us? What mm-hmm. topics do you want us to cover? Um, you know, I mean, we, we each have unique experiences and how we have developed our own kind of moderate approaches to different things. Mm-hmm. Mine through triathlon, Michael through um, training and, and uh, you, we didn't talk about it, but we will about your diagnosis with type one diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for sure. Yeah. So yeah. cool. So I guess, I guess we just want to say, um, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and just, you know, we we might be a little bit annoying about this at first, but, uh, please, if you enjoy this, subscribe, um, share it on social media, you know, email a link to your friends. Um, give us a review. Yeah. Give us a review. All that stuff is super critical in kind of the beginning stages of something like this. And so, um, yeah, we just, we just appreciate any support and any spreading, sharing the word about what we're doing from all of you. So please, please, please do that. Excellent. All right. We'll see you next week.